Hello everyone! Today we're going to be talking about resin printing! So a lot of you have been getting into resin printing. I've gotten into resin printing. I love it so much. It's so easy to create really beautiful pieces for cosplay. Uh, for all of you who don't know what I'm talking about and just, you know, came upon my video and are like, what is resin printing? How is it different from 3D printing? Well, resin printing is 3D printing. And the way that it works is um, regular 3D printing on like a filament printer. What you usually see um, people do is uh, it uses plastic filaments such as ABS or PLA or PETG and it prints kind of like if you could imagine if you took some whipped cream in a can and you just like and you built up like a whipped cream tower or a cheese whiz tower and uh, that's what 3D printing with the filament printer does but with resin printing I don't think there's a good analogy for it, but uh, the way that it works is that it takes a tub of resin, like a vat of resin, and there's lasers and the lasers will activate the resin and cure it. And as it pulls itself out of the resin bath, you'll see intricate, cool details that are coming out of it. So fancy and really, really cool. So let's talk about resin printing and how it can change the way that you work on your costumes. And if you're not here for cosplay, you can also use resin printing for cool things like miniatures for your tabletop games and more. The printer that I'm gonna be talking about today specifically is the Elegoo Mars. That is my resin printer. I have two of them and now I have three of them. And that's why I wanted to start this video so that you guys can see the third one. Oh my God. So I have the Elegoo Mars the Elegoo Mars Pro and the Elegoo Mars Pro 2. Oh my God, it's so exciting. And it is so cool. All three printers are exactly the same size and they're all gonna sit next to each other in my garage. But right now I'm going to show you an unboxing of it so you can see just how easy it is to set up. So this is the printer. This is the box that it came in. You can order it off of Amazon. I'm going to put a link in the description below. And if you guys purchase it from that link, then I get a little bit of kickback. Thank you for our Amazon affiliates being super dope. This box is not very big as you can see because the printer itself is like just about this big ish. Um, and it is so simple to set up. I have many other 3D printers that are the filament printers and they come in so many parts like with instructions it's just like putting together ikea furniture but the elegoo mars is so easy that it's literally just take it out of the box plug it in and it's ready to go let me show you all the different parts all right so first we have some extra film and a instruction manual we're gonna pull out this toolbox over here this toolbox is filled with things that you're gonna need um like it's it's not necessarily neat but they put it in there and it makes your life a lot easier so they provide you with a measuring cup a usb drive like holy crap they didn't have to provide one but they did and a bunch of gloves i highly recommend you go and buy a box of latex gloves or nitrate nitrile 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 gloves um they're widely available now because of covid um, but you will absolutely need gloves when you're working on this because resin is toxic for your skin and you don't want to develop an allergy to them. So wear your gloves. It comes with a bunch of Allen keys. You are definitely going to need to use these to set up your machine. It comes with scrapers. Um, this one is metal and this one is plastic. I like to use the plastic one because uh, I don't like to scratch up the uh, print bed uh, with the metal thing. So this is kind of just if in case I have a print that will not come off the bed. We got our power supply. It is recommended that you wear um, respiratory protection when you're working with this. Resin is still very toxic. So disclaimer for the, the rest of this video, always wear protection. Always wear protection when you're working with this printer because resin is toxic for your skin as well as for your respiratory system. So you wanna make sure that you've got that all covered. Thankfully, the Mars Pro and the Mars 2 Pro both have um, carbon filters on them, but when you lift the cover off of the printer, it's still going to have a bunch of resin fumes hit you in the face. So you need to work 
um, with this printer in a well ventilated area um, or in your garage because your garage is just a giant room that's like open to the air. Uh, but if you're going to work on this inside of your house, you will want to try and figure out some kind of ventilation system for yourself. There are plenty of forums on the internet that will talk about this and you can see solutions that other people have come up with. They also provide funnels. I actually don't know what this is. So we're going to find out later in the manual <laughs> what this is. Uh, they come with little snips. This is how you would snip off the supports um but i will show you a way where you don't have to snap off the supports you can just use your hand i'll show you that later and with the mars pro series uh it comes with a little seal to put on the bottom of your cover and this makes it so that it's an airtight seal uh this thing is pretty great and it makes it easier to remove the cover than in the past because you will see i will show you later the difference between removing the seal on a mars pro and a regular mars now we're gonna take a look at the printer itself. This is the entire printer, you guys. It's a small little baby. Look at this boy. It's about the size of my torso and it can sit on a tabletop super easily. This is the entire thing. It doesn't need to have more space than this. Um, so you can see the top part is a red cover and then the bottom part is the machine and then everything inside of this part is where the prints are going to be happening. There's an LCD LCD screen right here. Yeah, there's a little screen right here. It's a touch screen and that's where you're going to be controlling all of your prints. Okay, here we are. This is the machine. You can see that this is the vat where you're going to be pouring all of your resin into. This is your Z axis and this is the print bed. Um, basically what it does is it will attach the print onto this plate right here and as it moves upward, um, the plate will be dragging the print out of the resin and this is where you're going to be pulling your print off of let's pull off the plastic yeah so we also have to remove the vat off because there is plastic on all of the parts there is plastic over here as well just gonna take that off oh yeah and then we're going to place this back on. You can see right here, there is a little indicator on the maximum amount of resin you can pour into this. This is really helpful, especially for new people who are using this for the first time. You don't wanna over pour because then it will everywhere. Um, so here, just pour it up to the line or as much resin as you think you need. And then what you do is you place it back onto the machine and you twist these little knobbies and it's on there. It's nice and stuck on there. One of the things that I actually recommend is to put a little bit of masking tape underneath, but make sure you're not um, hitting the actual screen on the bottom. You just put a little bit of masking tape on the sides. And the reason for that is that it creates a much better seal. This is something that a lot of other um, users of, of Elegu Mars has dis have discovered and they've put this on like forums and stuff. So it might end up helping you with a lot of headache if you just put some um, masking tape on there. I've done that and it's literally all of my prints come out perfect. I never really have that much issue with it. So do it up. Once I turn the machine on, I can move the Z axis and I can actually put this uh, build platform on top of there. But for now, I cannot because it's all the way down. Other things we want to take a look at on the screen. Oh my God, there's more plastic. Uh, yes. Oh, so good. Other things we want to take a look at on this machine. Over here is the on switch and off switch. Boop, boop, boop. This is also where the power uh, plug is. Um, and over here, as well as the sides are where the vents are. And then my favorite thing about the Pro Series is that they put the USB drive in the front. Oh my God. I wish they would just go back to the original Mars and move that USB drive to the front. This was like a thing that all of the users of uh, the Marses were like, yo, can you please put this in the front? Cause it's so annoying to reach around in the back and <laughs> reach around. So now that you've purchased your Elegoo Mars and you're like, wow, I really want to get started printing. You gotta stop right there. There are still so many more things you're gonna have to prep before you get started on printing because it's like a couple of steps process. The other things that you're going to need to purchase um, is definitely a ton of isopropyl alcohol. Isopropyl alcohol is how you clean the uncured resin off of your resin prints and you wanna put them in the isopropyl alcohol bath. Um, and to create a bath, you're gonna need a big tub. You can buy tubs off of Amazon 
his picture. And of course, make sure you hit the link down below so you can buy that vat. And you just pour a bottle of alcohol in there. And then every time you do a print, you just throw the print in that vat, let it sit for a couple of minutes until it stops being slimy, pull it out, and then the next thing is you will either need a UV lamp or you can just put it on your windowsill. I actually prefer to put my 3D prints on a windowsill because I found that the sunlight is not as harsh as a UV lamp. And the problem with UV lamps is that if you're not rotating your 3D print um, at a constant speed, then it will tend to burn your prints um, and will make them very brittle. Uh, and it'll, it tends to cure like very, um, unevenly. And when it cures unevenly, it might warp it. Uh, so that's something I actually had to learn the hard way because I went and bought myself this really strong UV lamp and I put it inside of a box with tons of tin foil, which is how it was recommended to me to do it. But then I discovered that it, my prints always came out really brittle or really like burnt looking, especially for my clear resins. And then I decided to just start putting them on windowsills, which was what I did before I even got the UV lamp. And they turn out completely fine on windowsills. I actually keep them next to my plants. Um, the other thing that you can purchase if you would like to is a rotating UV curing station. There are plenty of uh, options available on the internet. I actually only just recently discovered them. They're called wash and cure stations. It's a platform inside of a box and the box apparently also provides a place for you to pour isopropyl alcohol in there as well. It's up to you how much money you want to spend, but for me, it's just a tub of alcohol and sunlight. So if you want to start off there, totally fine. That's where I'm at in my steps. Eventually, maybe I'll purchase something more sophisticated, but for right now, this is how I like to work. I'm sure people in the comments are going to give you so many recommendations on much better ways to cure your prints. Um, there's other kinds of liquids that you can use besides the alcohol, but I'm going to let you guys talk about it in the comments because a lot of people will have much more information than I do. I personally just use isopropyl alcohol. Um, right now during COVID, it's hard to find um, the alcohol. So uh, refer to the comments for people who are going to have more information than me. Yeah. One of the top reasons why I prefer resin printing over filament printing is because I've been doing filament printing for years now and um, there's a lot of prep that you're going to have to do um, before they become the final version of whatever you're working on. And that is a lot of sanding, a uh, filler and primer, uh, sanding again and then wet sanding. And you're going to spend a lot of your time and money on tools that will sand your your props for you or your your cosplay items and stuff. Um, versus using this resin printer, yo, I don't, I don't have to sand it if I don't want to. I can literally just have it cured and then paint it and it's done so much easier. It saves me hundreds of hours of sanding. It saves my fingers. It saves my hands, my skin. I don't have to have calloused hands anymore. I don't have to have one strong right arm. It will just be beautiful right off the print bed. So here's an example of something that you can print on your resin printer. Small pieces are fantastic on it, especially when they're many, many tiny pieces. So this is a hair clip for the new KDA All Out music video. Actually, I think this might be based on the baddest um, hair clip for Ari. You can see that this is just this perfectly smooth. I did not have to sand this at all. I literally pulled it off the printer and then painted it so easy. But then you can do some more advanced things such as this. This is printed with clear resin. I had maybe five days to make this thing. I had no time because uh, the cosplay was due um, on the day that the video released. And so I didn't have very much time to make it. And I threw together a 3D model in Fusion 360 and I split it up into pieces put it through Chi2 box, which is the slicer that you're gonna need to, in order to print on your resin printer. And uh, then I printed it and airbrushed it and it looks so good. This is probably the coolest thing I've ever um, resin printed. And you can see it's nice and hollow, which makes it really lightweight. All of the separate pieces are actually glued together with E6000, which is um, one of my favorite glues to use for like clear projects like this. You can see there's some errors that I, <laughs> that's my this is me this is not you you're gonna you're gonna do really perfect just you're this this is me <laughs> don't worry about it. don't look at it um so what's great about this is that it took to the airbrushing super well um i would have 
sanded this and buffed it if I had the time, but even without any buffing, like you can see that it's still rather reflective. I also airbrushed some um, metallic chrome on here just to give it that extra oomph every time it catches the light. But yeah, you can print this into segments uh, on your resin printer and then glue it together. So cool, so easy. And then um, if you are cosplayers and you care about this stuff, but I used magnets to attach it to my clothing and then that way I didn't have to worry about having straps or snaps or anything and it's super nice. Oh my God, it stuck on the whole time I was wearing it like three different days. And this thing was, oh, oh, this thing is almost bulletproof. I love it so much. Um, I really want to make it again with a different pattern that I actually asked my friend to help me with and that's what we're going to be 3D printing to show you guys. Yay! Now let's go set up my new 3D printer. Woo! And you guys will get to see just how easy it is to set up and print and clean and start making cosplays on your resin printer. First, plug in your machine and get it situated. Remove the tank off of the bed and you're going to turn on the machine and raise up the Z-Rod. Once the Z-Rod is raised, you'll be able to attach the build platform onto it. All you have to do is twist the knob and it'll tighten. Loosen the screws with the Allen key provided. Then take a piece of printer paper and place it on the bed. Lower the build platform down with the home button. And this will ensure that your build platform is going to be completely level with the actual bed itself. Then tighten the screws one at a time and then do a final tighten so that they're really snug. This part is not necessary. I was talking about it before. Adding masking tape to the sides is highly recommended. Just make sure you're not covering the LCD screen. Since this is a tutorial for cosplay, let's start by using clear resin because I wanna show you guys just how you can use this for your cosplays. Pour as much resin as you'd like, as long as it doesn't surpass the max line. I recommend that the resin always fills the bottom of the tank. The USB drive already comes with a file for you to print. It's the Elegoo Rook model. And go ahead and just let it start printing. It'll take about two hours and seven minutes. You can see that they indicate the amount of time that the print is going to take right here, which is very useful. The build platform will slowly raise up, pulling the model out, and you can see it coming together. This is one way to remove prints off of your printer. You remove the build platform and then you use some elbow grease, either with a scraper, with your hands, and you rip the prints off. Clean it inside of your isopropyl alcohol tank, and you can see after a few minutes, they come out super smooth. It's so crystal clear and you barely need any sanding. I also have two rooks that I printed with regular resin so you can see how that turns out. So now that we've tested your printer and it turned out totally fine, we're going to move on to printing one of your models. Here's a piece of my new Ari shoulder that my friend modeled for me. This program is called Cheetubox. This program is how you're going to be setting up your pieces for your printer. In here, you'll be able to move your pieces around, rotate them, scale them, mirror them if you'd like. Most importantly, you have to set up the supports. This might look really complicated, but don't worry, I'll walk you through some of it. You can set up how thick you want the supports to be. For a project like this, you probably want it between medium to light. Heavy is more like something that's gonna take up the entire print bed. My favorite thing to do on here is to add Z lift height. This makes it so that the print is actually off of the bed and not attached to it. You saw with the Rook model, it took a little bit of elbow grease, but if you add Z lift height, it will remove a lot of the headache of pulling prints off of your bed. Then click on the plus all button at the bottom and that will create the supports for all of it. You can also add your own custom supports, which I usually do because some of these corners tend to curl up if they're not being supported properly. Go back to the other tab and click slice, save it onto your USB drive and it is ready to go. Bring your USB drive back over to your printer, select the file and start to print. Walk away and you'll return to a beautiful completed piece. Now you can see how easy it is to rip off a piece from the print platform without any elbow grease needed. You just use plastic spatula and it's totally fine. I can show you another piece that I printed on my regular Elegoo Mars and you can see how easy it is to just pull it right off the plate. This is where I like to pull off the supports while it's still kind of soft and it hasn't been cured under the resin light yet. 
you kind of just squeeze it in your hand and it comes right out. Of course, there's going to be little nubs on there that still have pieces of the supports, but you can go through and sand that down if you'd like. Then you take your pieces over to the isopropyl alcohol bath and give them a little swishing around, make sure all the sliminess of the resin is off, and then you can move it over to where you're going to be curing. Like I said before, I cure my prints on my windowsill. You can see two of my pieces on here. They're different from the ones I printed because I filmed this beforehand. And here are the pieces that we printed. You can see the difference between the coloration of these two. This one is slightly darker because it's been sitting on my windowsill for two days. And this one is slightly lighter because it's only been sitting on my windowsill for maybe eight hours. So the longer that this resin sits underneath UV, the darker color it will get. And I like to akin it to like radiation burn. And that's why for something like um, clear resin printing, I highly recommend doing a very slow curing process so that you don't end up getting really dark yellowy spots. There's probably better resin that you can purchase out there that won't do this. Um, I'm absolutely sure that there is, but this is the resin that I use. And when I airbrush it, you can't see that yellowy tone on it. So it's totally fine by me, but definitely give a try to the different resins that are available out there. You can also add dye to your resin, which I haven't tried yet, but please try it. Let me know how it goes and it, you can print with color, which is fantastic. There's a certain kind of dye that's out there. Like I said, people in the comments, give all that information, give all that juicy knowledge for us, and uh, hopefully it'll help you guys for your next cosplay project. The Elegoo Mars is extremely affordable. It used to be back in the day that resin printers were like a thousand to two thousand dollars, but the Elegoo Mars is just south of three hundred dollars. Like I got mine for two hundred and fifty. So if you guys want to get into resin printing, this is the perfect time to get into it. The Elegoo Mars is not the only resin printer that is available out there. There's tons of other companies. Just do some research and figure out the one that works best for you. And there's lots of communities online where you can ask questions and find out tips and tricks on how to make it work for you. As a cosplayer, I think this is going to be a huge game changer because it makes it a lot easier to fabricate complex shapes that are small and you know it's just limited by your imagination so please give it a try you guys i hope this video has inspired you if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel i just hit a hundred thousand on here which is really amazing so thank you thank you guys so much for all of the support i will definitely be putting out more cosplay content in the future either transformation or tutorial wise but your support means so very much to me. So make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter and all those other platforms because I can't stop producing content. I love it so much. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.